One of the first things that you need to know when you open up an image in Photoshop is uh, or is or are the specifications of the image. And we can talk about how the image is made up. So what, what is the image made from? We can talk about the colors that make up the image and we can talk about file formats and sizes. So let's start with how the image is displayed. So images in Photoshop are displayed as bitmap images. A bitmap image has a geometric arrangement or mapping of dots on a rectangular grid. Each rectangle within the grid is called a pixel and pixels are the foundation of raster images. And that kind of is a little wordy and it doesn't make a lot of sense, but basically what it's saying is that from a distance, so if we look at this first one on the left hand side, from a distance we can look at an image and see what appears to be a full color image. It's an image of a ferris wheel that has circus tents and they're brightly colored and there's mountains and sky in the background and it looks to us like we're looking at a ferris wheel. But the further we zoom in on the picture, we'll notice that the picture is not made up of continuous colors or strokes. It's made up of little tiny squares, or they're called pixels. They don't, they don't have to be squares, but I'm not going to get into that right now. Uh, most pixels are squares. Um, but as you zoom in, you'll see that it's really just the illusion that we're looking at a Ferris wheel. We're not actually looking at a Ferris wheel. I'm looking at a computer screen. And the further we zoom in on the picture, we'll see that the image is made up of little tiny squares that create that illusion. And the more squares we have, we consider that a higher resolution or higher quality image. And the lower the number of pixels in the image, we'd say that there was a lower quality image. Um, because Photoshop is a bitmap program, it is best suited for editing photographic or painterly images that contain subtle gradations of continuous tone color. So there, there's, there's a term called continuous tone color that you need to be aware of. So images with a virtually unlimited color gamut are considered to be continuous tone. True continuous tone images are creating traditional black and white or color photography with film. And you can't get actual continuous tone images if you're creating the illusion of a picture. If I'm outside and I'm looking at that ferris wheel, it is a continuous tone image. I see all the colors that I'm supposed to see. I have 50,000 shades of green and they just flow seamlessly into one another. Um, the only way you can actually get that continuous tone image is to use film-based photography. And so what we're going to say is that images in Photoshop are going to be full color images. They're colors, they're images that represent the colors in the real world, but they're not actually um, continuous tone because we can't zoom in on it and see the actual um, piece of metal that creates the ferris wheel. We see little squares that make the, the illusion that we're seeing the metal on the ferris wheel. And so what we're going to say about full color images are that they are continuous tone images reproduced using a limited color gamut and they are considered to be full color but not necessarily true continuous tone or true color. Printed images are produced using halftone dot patterns of cyan, magenta, yellow, and black, and digital images are produced using pixels comprised of varying levels of red, green, and blue. It doesn't matter if we're printing or if we're looking at an image on a screen, we're still seeing a, a simulation of whatever we're trying to see. So I've never been to the Taj Mahal, but I've seen a picture of the Taj Mahal in India, and so I've never seen the continuous tone version of it. I've never seen an actual film version. I've never been there. But I can see the representation of the Taj Mahal, and I would see it as a full color image that's made up of pixels if I was looking at it on screen, or something called halftone dots, which we'll talk about um, in a slide or two, um, if I was printing it. And so if we look closely at these images, I can see I have an image of a sky, and it doesn't, doesn't look much different, right? But if I zoom in on the picture, this is a printed picture, I can slowly start to see that the quality is decreasing as I zoom in and I start to see little circles. I don't know if it's going to come across so well in my little video here, but if you look really closely at the image on the bottom right hand side of the screen right now, you can see little tiny circles. Those are little dots of cyan, magenta, yellow, and black that have been printed to create the illusion of clouds. So if we go back to the first cloud picture up here, from a distance we look at that and we say it's clouds. The second image, if we look at that, we kind of see weird stuff starting to happen. There's a little pattern going on, and we don't know exactly what's happening, but we say, eh, it doesn't look too perfect uh, uh, just now. But the further we zoom in on it, I can zoom in on even further, we can see that we're creating the illusion of a continuous tone image, but we can't have continuous tone. We have little dots that make up our picture. 
And so if we're talking about printing, they're dots, right? They're DPI, dots per inch, and they're little circles. I'm going to go back for a second. If we're talking about images on a computer screen or a display device, we're talking about squares or pixels. And again, pixels don't have to be squares, but for our class, they will be squares because we're not going to get into the complexity of pixel uh, shapes and dimensions in Art 1280. Okay, once you feel like you've grasped the concept that we don't have actual uh, continuous tone images, instead we're going to use the term full color and that printed images are printed with little circles and images on screen are displayed with little squares called pixels, you can move on to the next video in this series.